Welcome to Port Vell Marina in Barcelona. It's the end of the Barcelona Boat Show and this is where we catch up with the Prestige 630. Now this boat was launched at the Cannes Boat Show. It replaces the 620, which has been a very successful boat for Prestige. And we have a fantastic opportunity to really get beneath the skin of this new model. We're gonna take it from here in Barcelona to Valencia. It's about 220 miles, so a really good stint. We're gonna stop off halfway at San Carlos Marina. Again, that's about 120 miles. That's where we're gonna to go today. So we've got two days to really get beneath the skin of this new model from Prestige. Let's get going. So we've just left Barcelona, we're up to speed. Don't worry, the skipper has control from the lower helm. Um, and it's pretty benign out here, to be honest. It's nice and sunny. Uh, it's very light northwesterlies. There's a bit of residual swell coming in from storms that they had here last week, but really the 630 is taking it all in her stride. This is hull number one. It's quite a heavy boat. Uh, she's got the IPS 950s. It's the only engine option that's twin 725 horsepower diesels. We're going on about 25 knots now and feels very comfortable indeed. Uh, major changes over the 620, well the most obvious is the styling on the outside, it's a Garoni design as well but it falls into line with the look of the 680 and the 750. On the inside it's a much more stylish, contemporary, up-to-date interior, cleaner lines, lighter woods, lighter fabrics, looks really fresh down there. It also has a new hull. The 620 was a Michael Peters design, this is a J&J &J design so there are a fair few changes on board, so far so good today. Status update, not too much has changed really. It's still a lovely calm day, beautifully smooth sea. Visibility is pretty good. We've been able to see the coastline all the way along. So as a passage like this goes, it couldn't have been much better. The boat's been very impressive. Of course, it's very easy conditions, but uh, it's very, very well sorted driving environment down here. I love the three big MFDs you have in front of you. So we've got the chart, the radar, and the engine information up. It's really clear to see and easy to interact with. This seat is super comfortable. I've been on here for about an hour. View's excellent. You can comfortably sit two people up here. You can stand no problem. You've got opening windows both sides. Really well sorted driving environment. Um, as I said, we've got the IPS 950s on here um, and we're currently at full revs doing 28 knots. This hull number one is quite heavy. They overdid it a bit in the fiberglass in the construction show. This is a heavy boat. They would hope to get 30 knots flat out on further models, but at the moment we're flat out and doing about 27, 28. So 24 is a more comfortable cruising speed. So we've got about just under 20 miles to go, 45 minutes left on the water. Won't be long until we're tied up in St. Carlos. So we're just coming into the marina now after a pretty flawless day out on the water. The conditions have been absolutely amazing. There hasn't been a breath of wind all day, but with doing the photo shoot and stopping to meet another boat, we've been out there for sort of five or six hours on board the, the 6.30. So we've had a pretty good idea of how it handles what were pretty benign conditions, it has to be said. It's a very, very quiet boat, uh, especially we spend most of our time driving from the lower helm and they still have insulation to add down there, but it's notably quiet and refined boat and we were cruising sort of between 20 and 27 knots all day long. Um, now we've just got to bring her alongside here at St. Carl's Marina and uh, time for a beer I think. So before we get going this morning off to Valencia, let's have a quick tour around the interior of the 630. And one of the main changes is actually back here where they've extended the galley by 20 centimetres. They've also included this window here. We're seeing this on quite a few boats now, but this boat's got it now so that you can easily open up the galley to the cockpit here. Very sociable and obviously this door slides nice and wide as well. 
And then moving back in, you notice that you have full size domestic fridge and freezer, which is gonna be good to have on a boat of this size. And there's a little step up here, back into the main part of the saloon where you have your socializing space. Now these big windows, these have come from the 680. You can see there's a dip here, so you've got as much light as possible coming in from either side and they make a big, big difference on the inside of this boat. And as I mentioned earlier on, you have a far more contemporary feeling in here, cleaner fabrics, nice modern cabinetry. It really is a fresh vibe inside this interior compared to the 620. And then we've talked about the, the helm here and you move down this companionway and you're into the guest accommodation which includes an absolutely fabulous VIP cabin forward here. This is something that they've improved on from the 620. And once you're inside here, you shut the door, you really feel like you're in a master cabin, to be quite honest. It's very spacious. There's a huge amount of headroom. They've got hatches either side here. Of course, you have a seating area and bench right above us here, but they've put two big hatches either side to make sure you still get natural light. And it has a fantastic ensuite of its own as well. And then here to port, you have a twin guest cabin. but the main accommodation part is going to be the master cabin, which has separate access. So let's go and have a look at that. So the 620 was the last boat in the Prestige range that didn't have their trademark separate access to the master cabin from the saloon. Obviously the 630's got that. So it means you wind your way down this staircase, totally separate from the rest of the accommodation. And you find yourself here in what is a pretty spectacular master cabin. Huge amounts of headroom in here. You have a completely flat floor, nice big island berth, tapers here at the foot so that you can get around either side nice and easily. Loads of storage in here, light is superb. You've got these big hull windows either side with ventilation in from big round ports. And the bathroom's pretty impressive as well. Really big and spacious, absolutely incredible headroom in here, especially in the shower. It's about eight foot of headroom uh, in the shower cubicle itself. It really is a very special cabin indeed. One slight negative of the interior design, and actually there are a few points of this in the saloon and other parts of the interior, there are some very hard edges around here. This is one, and as you can see down here, there's a very hard corner up in the saloon, in the galley. Even the handhelds have quite hard corners on them and you wouldn't want to bang yourself on them out at sea. There are two ways to access the engine room on the 630. You can either come down this hatch here uh, from the cockpit, down this ladder, or there's access via a watertight door from the crew cabin. And once inside, it's a very impressive engine room space. You can get to both sides of both engines very easily. The pods are on jack shafts, so they're a little bit tucked away. It's not so easy to get to them, but that is good for weight balance on the boat, as is the fact that you have the tanks and the generator set forward here. There's plenty of insulation around me, as you can probably see, but either side is a little lacking on hull number one. They're going to add that to further production models to try and keep the lowest levels down in the saloon. So it's currently just before 9am. We've got another absolutely stunning day here in Spain. It's very calm, very still. The sun's just coming up. We've got about 100 miles to get to Valencia and we should be off pretty shortly. So boats being boats, we fired up the engines and we got a warning from the port one that there was low oil on the port side pod drive. Uh, so last minute, the marina manager here at San Carlos has called a Volvo engineer who's going to come down and check it out and top it up if needs be. But that's boating, isn't it? So the boat is actually back up and running. As usual with these things, it was a faulty sensor, which to be fair to the Volvo guys here at San Carlos, they have rectified very quickly and got the part and the boat is running. However, it's taken long enough that we're not gonna be able to join it on the trip to Valencia, sadly. We've got a flight to catch and have to get a cab. It's a shame that we don't get as much time aboard as we thought we were going to, but yesterday we did get a good amount of time on the boat and got a good taste for it. And I have to say the changes that Prestige has made to make the 620 to 630 have really had a good effect. From the outside, it looks fresh, the same on the inside. It's got a fantastic VIP cabin and having that separate access master, okay, we've seen it before in Prestige, but it still feels special. It's still a nice thing to have. Question marks, well, these engines, they perform very well in the lovely calm weather we had yesterday, but with a whole load of cruising gear on board, a bit of fouling on the hull and rougher weather, will the performance be as good? It's hard to say, something to check. And of course, there's also the interior with those hard edges. I think that's something they need to look at going forward as well. But overall, the changes they've made have been a real success. It's just a shame we won't be joining it on the trip to Valencia.